Okay, so we're moving on from copper and nickel to what's called a binary eutectic system. Binary means there's two components still. Eutectic, though, means that there's a special composition which has a minimum melting point. So it means that if you have this composition, it will actually melt at a lower temperature than if you had either one by itself. So this is copper and silver mixed here together. And if you reach this 71.9% silver, it will actually melt at a lower temperature than if it was just copper or just silver, which is really cool. We also see that this is com has complete solid solubility, at least at lower temperatures. Once we get to higher temperatures, you see we begin to have these phases pop out, which are going to say that it's no longer completely soluble. Okay, so with this, there are three single phase regions. So right here, this is gonna be mostly solid copper with some silver mixed in. This one over here is gonna be mostly solid silver with some copper impurities. That's what we talk about. It's no longer uh, it's no longer just like mixed in there. It just happens to get stuck. At that point, um, copper in this section is just like sugar that has fallen out in the water. It's there and it's technically they're mixed together. Um, however, it's not in any sort of structured form. And then right here we have that mixture of the two. So there is limited solubility in this case. So alpha, mostly copper, beta, mostly silver. This one right here is a mixture of the two. Now we have this eutectic point right here, which is why I said is the point where it melts at the lowest temperature possible. And it's lower than either of their melting points. As long as we're below that temperature, there is no liquid. And if we're at that special temperature, we have a eutectic reaction. So we go from two solid phases to a single liquid phase. That's important, two solid phases to a single liquid phase. And if we then look at it, well, what does that mean? Well, it means that what we're gonna have is eight weight percent silver alpha phase and a 91.2 weight percent silver beta phase that mix together to turn into a perfect liquid phase that is 71.9 weight percent silver. And if we cool or heat, it will go from one phase, which is liquid to two phase mixture of alpha and beta. So that's all cool. Um, but one thing I wanted to bring in here is to mention that the eutectoid point and the eutectic points are going to change. We don't know what eutectic point is, but it's, just, it's very similar to eutectic. It's just two solids to another solid. Um, so the eutectoid point or the eutectic point is going to change as we add other elements. So if you add our alloys, it will change how we're, um, our eutectoid point or eutectic point. So, so far we've been looking at two things, but you can add other impurities if you want, and that's gonna mess with the properties. Okay, so now we've changed a little bit. This is an example we're gonna go through. This is lead and tin right here. Lead and tin, it's a eutectic system. And it's very, very sim similar to what we saw earlier with um, copper and silver. So there's a eutectic point where we go from two solid phases to a single liquid phase, and that happens at 61.9 weight percent tin. So what we want to figure out is the number of phases present at 150 degree degrees Celsius and 40 weight percent sin, sorry, tin. So we go up from 40, we come over from 150, that's where we start. So first off, we have to drag our tie line across. So we go all the way over to where it hits alpha, which will be at 11%, all the way over where it hits beta, and that'll be at 99%. And as a note, um, for any of the problems you have actually um, in the textbook, if it's not visual or easy to visualize, 
Um, usually a guess is enough. I, I'm not super hard about how I grade those. I also have digitized most of the data, so you can actually look at a spreadsheet that shows it all. But that said, if we want to find the weight percent or the weight fraction of the alpha and the beta phase here, then I use my simple equation here. If I can figure out the distance from um, the center to the beta phase over the total length of my tie line, I can solve for the weight fraction of alpha. As you can see, I am closer to alpha, and so there is more of alpha. I am further away from the beta phase, so there is less of the beta phase. Um, and just as a note, alpha and beta, they're two solid phases. Alpha means that I'm mostly tin, and um, I have a, just a smattering of silver atoms mixed in. And the other one says I'm mostly, sorry, um, uh, sorry, I mixed it up. Alpha says I'm mostly lead with a smattering of tin atoms just mixed in. And beta says I'm mostly tin with just a little bit of lead atoms mixed in. So that's what we're seeing right there. They're solid phases. It's just um, how they are actually present. So let's look at it again this time. But now let's look at a 60% um, tin lead alloy at 220 degrees Celsius. So 60% um, lead, 40% tin. I go up to here. I'm going to have to draw my tie line across. And what you can see is I'm now in this liquidy region. I've gone above my eutectic point. And as soon as you go above that point, some liquid is going to be present. Some liquid is going to be present. And so I'm on this side right here. So if I want to figure out the phase compositions, I have to connect to the closest phase lines which is going to be my alpha on the left and my liquid on the right. You can also see that I am closer to the liquid than I am to the um, alpha phase. And so this is the mostly lead phase right here. This is the mostly tin phase. So I am closer to the liquid region and further away from the lead region, which means I'm mostly liquid here. I can also find the composition of um, the liquid and the lead regions. It says lead region is just 17 weight percent tin currently, and the liquid region is 46 weight percent tin. I want to find the weight fraction. I first find the distance between these two points. So that would be 46 minus 17, that's what you see right here, which comes out to be 29. And then I find the distance to the opposite side. So I'm trying to find the weight fraction of liquid. I find the distance to the alpha. So that would be 46, sorry, 40 minus 17. So that's what I get right here. That's 23. And for the alpha side, I find the distance to the liquid point. So that would be 46 minus 40, which is right here. And so as you can see, I'm closer to liquid, and so I have a greater weight fraction of liquid. Okay, that's it for this time. Hopefully that tie line is starting to make a little bit more sense. It's a fairly simple process once you realize how to use it. But I realize that it can seem, um, I don't know, weird at first. But we'll keep on practicing until you get it. So thank you for listening, and have a great day. Bye-bye.